Yeah, there's a lot of nature happening outside, it turns out. Greetings, and welcome to another LGR thing about weird computer mouse devices, this time from, I think, all the 2000s. So we've got a cake, a golf, complete with putting green for your desktop, and, you know, yeah, I've seen these mice over the years that actually look like the mouse, you know, the, the animal. Well, have you ever seen one that actually just looks like the cursor? Well, we've got one of those, too. Uh, yeah, so before it rains, I um, think I'm gonna go back inside and we'll take a look at these lovely products. Time to golf with a mouse. Yeah, we have the CVS Golf Ball Optical Mouse from 2013. Though I guess it's more of a golf disc. It's not exactly a ball, but it's golf ball-esque for sure. And yeah, it's the, uh, really the whole overall presentation that attracted me to this. I mean, we've got the golf disc, we got a flag, little balls, a putter, and a golfing green putting area with, uh, you can kind of see in there, there is actually a hole in there so you can play golf on your desktop, <laughs> thanks to CVS Pharmacy, or at least they're the ones that branded it. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with CVS, maybe you don't have them in your area or whatever, uh, well, they are a pharmacy, a drugstore, convenience store type of thing based out of Woonsocket, Rhode Island here in the US. And, uh, you know, they just carry all sorts of random goods in addition to the pharmacy. Whatever, man, it's one of those kind of places. And they also have one of those shelves that changes typically seasonally or, you know, every couple of months or so just filled with random crap. And, well, uh, this is where this would have been sold. Although you can see the, uh, the price was marked out on mine, so I don't know exactly what it retailed for originally, but I've seen other photos of this thing with stickers that still say $9.99. So I'm uh, not expecting a whole lot <laughs> from this mouse in terms of build quality or anything else. It was also sold as the Golf Optical 3D mouse in case you were curious at random discount retailers, you know, near Dollar Generals and places like that that sold cheap tat and uh, well, you know, Father's Day fodder or gifts for middle management, like a desk toy for really cheap executives with no taste. <laughs> so you just executives. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and open this thing up and um, try it out. I think I might have to... No, it actually does just open. All right. So, oh, <laughs> oh, wow. That is so much cheaper than I thought it would be. What in the world, man? This feels like... Um, the lightest foam imaginable. Do you remember those bath toys? You'd get them and just stick them up on the side of a bathtub and they just hold in place with surface tension, a little bit of moisture. I bet this will do the exact same thing. Yep. Anyway, uh, there's our little hole and it's on the floor now. Uh, we got instructions because we need those. <laughs> Those are hard to get out of there. Honestly, just the look and feel of them, you could probably just use like airsoft BBs, like the little plastic ones. I think six millimeter is their measurement. All right, so we have, oh my, the world's cheapest feeling golf disc mouse. Those buttons actually aren't that bad and the wheel isn't that bad either. It does even click. So it's by Best Channel Enterprises Limited. The CVS number is on there. So I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do with this flag. I do love the little putter though. It is delightful. Well, I guess I do need the instructions after all. <laughs> For personal use only? What other kind of use are you gonna give this? Dude, there's important safeguards. How dangerous is this? So look out for things that say danger. An imminently hazardous situation, which if not avoided, will result in death or serious injury. You could die playing desktop golf. So we have parts. Oh, it's, it's 800 DPI. It says two buttons, but there is a third with the scroll wheel, providing that it actually functions as a button. Well, whatever. Oh yeah, well, okay. So there is the little, oh, forgot about that. Okay, so you have uh, the little insert 
for the hole there. That makes sense. This is a little wonky looking. But the thing is, you're already on the putting green no matter what. So you would take the flag out. I guess that's more for just decoration when you're not playing or whatever. Ah, uh, there goes one of the balls on the ground. It just rolled into the fireplace. <laughs> this is not exactly a level table. Close enough. Okay. Oh my, that was legitimately my first try. I am a natural at desktop golf, may it be known. I am a prime executive material. I just gave me my BMW already, or an Audi or something, okay. Oh my goodness, that's two in a, okay. You know what, I can't possibly top this. Uh, let's plug this into a computer and uh, <laughs> play us a golf computer game, which I guarantee I won't be nearly as good at as physical desktop golf. Yeah, new LGR place, new LGR space to film. So we got the golf ball ready to go. Just plugged in, already going. It's just, eh, standard USB optical mouse. Nothing crazy there. And I would get a mouse pad, you know, typically something like my Comp USA pad, but I mean, come on. We've got that lovely putting green <laughs> with the, the flag. And I gotta get our balls out. There's my balls, all three of them. And that's gonna go right there. This is highly enjoyable just to see on a desk. I don't know why. I'm immediately seeing the appeal if I were to be a golf obsessed golf man. Speaking of obsessed golf men, yeah, I'm gonna try some Tiger Woods 99 because I feel like it. And I just got that out of storage the other day. Uh, oh yeah, man, ooh, mmm. I <laughs> like how the flag is like constantly uh, wobbling there as you move it. I don't know why that's amusing, but it is. Uh, yeah, this is getting that feeling from uh, like the Apple iMac G3 hockey puck mouse. <laughs> it's very much a similar vibe, just way cheaper feeling. Scroll feels pretty good. Yeah, get just enough feedback in there. It's not too scrolly. This on the other hand, oh, there go my balls. I put those fellas right here. Yeah. Uh, this this mouse pad, on the other hand, is just just terrible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it could almost use like some more moisture. Just plop, plop it down, and stick it to the table, because otherwise, it's just too light and flimsy. Anyway, Tiger Woods time. I'm already getting that same problem I have with e oh Sports. my word, the same problem with the uh, IMAX puck mouse is like which way. Is it oriented? You have to figure it out and make sure that your fingers and hands kind of stay there because otherwise you'll sort of lose the uh, the buttons. Yeah, anyway. So, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just tee off. I don't know where we're going. Well, that may slice a bit. Actually, it wasn't too bad. I'm Tiger Woods. Can't stop me, baby. Once I get on the, uh, the putting green, I'm going to see if I can, um, do better in the game or real life in terms of getting the ball into the hole that over there. Iron. Oh yeah, look at that. So I don't know how to really putt in this game. Let's just, just, just do that. I don't know. Oh man, that wasn't terribly uh, off, but FMV Tiger is unamused. So let's see if I do any better here. If I, if I get this again, I swear. Because seriously, right now I'm two for two. I'm putting into this thing. Oh! Went just to the left. Oh, that seems bad. Nope, it went in. Party. Party. Uh, let's just see if I can get this. If I can get this. Oh, dookie, dude. Well, eh. Well, you know what? This is actually not that bad. Uh, if you are, uh, you're, if you're used to the IMAX, you know, the old IMAX uh, hockey puck mouse, yeah, it's fine. I don't dislike this at all. It's just very, very lightweight. <laughs> and as silly as this is, I, uh, I, I do rather enjoy smacking my balls around the desk. You know, see if I can get them in. Oh, look at that, look at that. This is too much fun for $10 at a drugstore. Such tasty cake. We got a tasty cake, butterscotch, crimp it, USB optical mouse from circa 2009. All right, I don't know what a butterscotch crimp it is, but I guess it looks like that. I'm not much of a sweets person. 
much less tasty cake for someone even familiar with uh, the Tasty Baking Company, <laughs> which is really what they're called. And they're based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania here in the US and founded in 1914, selling baked treats ever since then. Primarily up and down the East Coast, really, of the USA, I've never seen them west of the Mississippi. Uh, maybe they didn't even go that far west, but yeah, it's like sort of a, a local-ish thing, uh, primarily sold at Acme Markets and ShopRite and giant stores, at least up in the Northeast. And you can find them at random you know, gas stations, convenience stores, and groceries down here too in the Southeast. But anyway, as for this mouse, well, I don't um <laughs> actually know wh what the story is behind this. Like, why is this, uh, well, why did they choose this? as a promotional thing. I, well, I don't know, but they did. And it was offered for sale in tasty cake displays in various stores. No idea what it cost. There's not exactly information out there about these things, but uh, it looks pretty sweet though. And it is a USB mouse. I'd say that's the icing on the cake. Nothing but fun additions to your computer here. All right, that's enough puns. You know, you can cake it until we make it, but. I'm gonna stop right there. So, let's see, whoa, that's it. I haven't actually opened this until now. Uh, this was a used item, so perhaps there were instructions, but I, I, yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't need them. Whatever, that's just gonna be like that. So, uh, yeah, USB. Oh, that's not bad. That actually feels uh, kind of mouse-ish. This is very rubbery. You can feel that it's on the cusp of the uh, degrading into goo, which I guess would be appropriate for something based on baked goods. So, um, yeah, it's just that, that, that like soft rubber coating that you got in the 2000s. I mean, yeah, this is late 2000s, but still, scroll wheel, and it does click. It's actually kind of um, translucent. I dig that. And yeah, just says optical mouse. <laughs> that's, well, that's what it is. Generic mouse made to cost in China. As for the hand feel, I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> Despite being very flat, that's kind of unusual. But you know, these little indentations on the side have some like natural places for my fingers and, and thumb to rest. It's just, you know, nothing going on down here for your palm. As for a comparison to an actual Tasty Cake crimpet, I have no idea. I've never had any Tasty Cake products, much less a butterscotch crimp it. So I think it's important in the name of science to change that. So let me go get one. Butterscotch crimp it's. Got me some of those sponge cakes with butterscotch icing. Mmm, it seems fine. Yeah, never had these. Uh, I, I don't really have uh, any goal here. It's kind of a half-baked idea, honestly, but you know, I just want to compare it to the mouse and see what we got going on in terms of the size and the color and all that stuff. Well, that's not exactly what I expected, but interesting. Well, I see what they were going for with the mouse uh, design now. They do have the little indentations, but they're a lot smaller than I figured they might be. I mean, they feel nice and moist. Actually, a very similar consistency of stickiness to the actual mouse, so uh, good job on that. Mmm, classic uh, kind of angel food cakey smell. All right, well, first up, it's gotta taste it because I'm just really curious. Hmm. All right, I gotta say that is um, really good. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be bad, but didn't expect it to be that good. Mm. Man, yeah, it's, it's not overly sweet. It's got so much moisture going on. As for the comparison to the mouse, I mean, it's not a bad job. Obviously the sizing is way off. Perhaps these come in different sizes. Maybe there's one that's actually this size, but man, that would be a lot of cake. You got this going on. Yeah, this, this definitely feels more mouse-like. It actually looks a lot closer to the picture that's on the box of the Crimpet. So this is, this is like an idealized tasty cake thing. Well, all right, whatever, enough messing around with this. Let's go and plug it into a computer. Okay, our tasty cake is out of the oven and set, ready to go, and yeah, well, feels like an optical mouse. <laughs> so, uh, that's good. Oh yeah, scroll wheel. 
I mean, you know, zero surprises at all. And immediately, also not a surprise, this back portion there, because it is just so flat and there's, there's no contouring at all, it, it's immediately pressing right into that ridge on my palm, which uh, does not feel great. And it's also just <laughs> straight up sticky. And that's not because I had stickiness from uh, the actual food earlier, but um, yeah, it's just, it's got that stickiness that is getting stickier as time goes on. Well, anyway, let's try a game with this. And I thought this would be quite appropriate. We have Easy Bake Kitchen by Hasbro Interactive. There's a full on CD-ROM playset. This thing goes on top of a keyboard. Uh, rest assured that'll be in a video itself at some point, probably alongside some other things that go on top of keyboards. But uh, I thought it'd be kind of appropriate here. So just the game itself. Such a dramatic introduction from Hasbro. Guess we gotta bake some. Uh, so yeah, we're not putting that on the keyboard. We just need the mouse. Hi, I'm Sally Sprinkle, and I'd love to be your baking pal. Nope, I want the bear. Bonjour, click on moi. You want some fun, eh? Click on the jack in the box to play games. So, which of these games? So, so, so. Okay, there is endless talking and way too much cheer going on. So, uh, what do we got here? We got Gingerbread Man, uh, Robot. You must catch all of these crazy cookies. <laughs> when you see one, zap. Oh, I guess you just, just gotta wait for him. <laughs> oh, uh, Gingerbread Man back there. I saw you, you little jerk. Really putting this mouse through its paces. For some reason, the like hitbox is off for these little guys. I was totally clicking them. Yeah, I'm clicking them. Look at that. You have to go below them. Who balanced this game? Come on. It won't let me click on that one. <laughs> well, whatever. It's totally not the mouse's fault. Uh, capital Pie. Nope. To win this game, you must ice 12 cookies before your time is all gone. Oh, sweet. This is a funny looking cookie. <laughs> Yeah, let's just splooge all the things we're not supposed to. Oh yeah. Splooge that rabbit. Alright, well anyway, uh, this mouse totally works. Yeah, get, get, get out of here. Oh, we're done, we're done, we're done. So anyway, uh, yeah, the Tasty Cake Optical Mouse. It's fine! It, it's totally fine. Well, this is uh, <laughs> an interesting design. It seems very creative and yet obvious at the same time. Why not make a mouse that looks like the cursor the mouse is driving? Yeah, so this right here is a bit of an art piece. The Muse 3 or Must 3, I don't know, optical arrow cursor from 2011. Yeah, it's an optical mouse by Art Lebedev Studio. So yeah, they're an interesting company or group of creatives. More so than I even knew until making this very video. I just got the mouse secondhand a while back since the design was silly and the price was low. This is not an endorsement of the company, but it turns out the studio is based in Moscow, Russia, with offices in Kyiv, London, and New York City. And they were founded by Artemy Lebedev in 1995 as a commercial and industrial design group. And though I saw it stated that they do not accept projects from either private citizens, religious groups, or political entities, eh, judging by their portfolio, it seems they do an awful lot of work for the Russian government, which is presumably funded by taxpayers, so I'm not sure how that's not political. Suffice it to say, their body of work is all over the place, with everything from traffic lights to web design to stupid computer mice. Really, the only thing I knew of theirs before this was the Optimus Maximus keyboard back in 2007. I remember ogling it online, but it was insanely overpriced, despite being a pretty cool looking keyboard that's really customizable, with each key having its own little fully customizable OLED screen on the key itself. So you can change it to put whatever you want on there, like having custom keycaps as screens. And yeah, as for the mouse key, or well, this is the third one, there was a Must 1, which is a one button mouse made for Mac users. The Must 2 had two buttons. You can see where they're going with this. And the Must 3 here added a scroll wheel. 
Yeah, I, I'm really intrigued uh, to find out what this actually feels like because uh, these weren't cheap. In fact, they sold for $100 new. Um, and I did not pay anywhere near that. Uh, in fact, you might see them online now for a thousand bucks. I mean, look at it. These listings are ridiculous. Uh, it's not worth that. I got mine for one twentieth of that price, maybe even less. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you never know with prices of weird things like this. I don't think there were a ton of them actually sold. I'm trying to figure out how to get this out of here. I do. I don't want to tear this whole thing apart because it's a pretty cool box, but <laughs> it's not making it easy. <sighs> there we go. All right. I also just noticed some of these uh, well specs on here, 800 DPI, two range, or two meter operating range, 2300 frames per second. And I'm glad those batteries were sectioned off like that. Otherwise that could have gotten kind of nasty. I mean, it's, it's, I'm just gonna leave those in there. Who cares? <laughs> those are uh, Gold Peak Batteries Group. Okay. Oh, what, what is this? Yes. Okay, here we go. Wow, what's this? It's Muse or Must 3. I don't know how to pronounce that. A uh, wireless optical mouse that works on any computer. Is it working already? First, you need to double it. Okay, so this is literally just the instructions in comic form. I mean, you know, art studio. Cool. So we have a little wireless receiver here, uh, branded artlibative.com in white. I don't know why that was chosen. You can barely see it, but a little button there, I guess for syncing or something. And wow, this feels uh, a lot cheaper than I was thinking it would, considering how much it cost back in the day. It feels cheaper than any of the others we've used. So, all right, we got our battery bay right there for a couple of double A's, I guess. Uh, another logo there that you can barely see. Some nice shaped pads on the bottom where you can glide around. The mouse or the, uh, the scroll wheel clicks. It is very small for a scroll wheel. Probably the smallest I've ever seen on a mouse that wasn't a miniature mouse. Uh-oh. That is a terrible button. It's bad when the, uh, the receiver's button is actually clickier than the actual mouse. That's just mushy and awful feeling. Well, uh, first impressions aren't great. Lovely instructions, fun design, um, you know, rather ergonomic <laughs> despite first uh, appearances. It really doesn't feel bad like that. It's just the button is not good. And uh, extremely, extremely lightweight. Let's try it out. Okay, it's Ms. 3 time. So that goes there, it's wireless. So we've got a dongle. Just plug that in down here. Found new hardware, USB presenter. Ooh, it's installed and ready to use. I think that's a lie. Oh, wait, <laughs> we might need batteries. I forgot about the batteries. You know, typically I just power these things off of sheer willpower, but uh, not this time. Okay, get in there. Aha, ooh, we got a blue LED. And it still doesn't work. We probably got to pair it or something. So let me press the buttons. Oh, hey, whoa. Oh, whoa, wait a second. Oh, that's weird. Does it work better? Nope. Totally doesn't work on just the desktop. Okay, so this is like uh, right above the receiver because the tower for the computer and the USB port is right there. But if I move it over to this side, it doesn't pick up at all. Okay, maybe if I move everything, okay. <laughs> wow. So that's about 17 or 18 inches maybe from the mouse to the uh, USB receiver. Well, anyway, I already hate this so much. <laughs> Using it for about five seconds here, this is awful. Not just the, the iffy wireless connection, but the placement of the mouse button, the lack of a right mouse button, which I just now realized, I don't like this stupid little scroll wheel. I don't like that it's so smooth. There's like nothing going on there. Yeah, and just the fact that you have to go to the very tip front of this and sort of do this action. Oh, this is bad. 
Go figure that the fanciest, fanciest, most expensive art project mouse is completely garbage out of, oh man, yeah, like, oh. Even the gimmicky little $10 shaped mice that you get at a grocery store are better than this. Oh, it, it, this is so uncomfortable to use. It would be better if the whole thing just like tipped forward to click, you know, like an Apple mouse. Maybe the, the Mus One did, the one that was made for a Mac. Whatever. Let's play something equally janky. Okay, maybe not as janky, but still. Duke Nukem Forever 2001, because that leaked. What a time to be alive. Yeah, we gotta do some Hollywood Holocaust if the mouse will move. Come on now. Uh. I'm trying really hard. Okay. Uh, almost had it. Almost had a signal. There we go. Okay, I did not do that. I think that was the wheel. Okay. Well, maybe. That's supposed to swap your weapons. It only sometimes, yeah, sometimes brings that up. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Whatever. Oh, nope. Nope. <laughs> wow, this is not doing uh, this this version of the game any favors. It's actually pretty awesome, all things considered. Oh, come on, shoot! Shoot! <laughs> oh, that's pathetic! What have you done to me? Oh, uh, whatever, I'm just gonna kick things. <laughs> At least I can play with the keyboard. Oh, there's that again. I did not mean to do that. Come on! What if I play it left-handed? It, it seemed to almost be working better over here. Yeah, kind of. Oh dear. Oh. All right. At least I got a rocket. Oh crap! I'm gonna have to. Eh, eh. Pinky jumping. No. I want to go in there. Okay. Uh. Oh, at least I didn't blow myself up. I thought I might. Let's get over there. Oh, nope, can't get the health. Dang it. Everything is going badly. Shoot! <laughs> Whoa. This is just like every single slight movement is a dice roll. I just want to die. There we go. You know what? So, like, even if the connection was perfect, this is so crappy to hold the, mo the mouse button placement, the, the little iffy wheel, the fact that it barely works, the mushiness of the button, even if the button was over in a good place, everything about it is bad except for the shape is kind of cool. Like seriously, I'm mean, just plug in the daggum cake again. Oh man. I make this look good. <laughs> I wish you'd have said, yeah, piece of cake. That would have been appropriate. All right, well, anyway. <laughs> the cake mouse. What, what, 10 times cheaper and uh, 10 times better? What in the world? Well, I suppose as good a time to stop as any for this iteration of a weird three mouse video. Didn't intend to make this a series, but it's fun. And y'all have asked for more, so I hope that you enjoyed this one. I do wish that cursor mouse ended up working a little bit better. Perhaps it would have had I used a different desk or table or setup or who knows what, but whatever, man. You just never know what you're gonna get comparing three random mouse devices like this. And I think that's what makes this so fascinating. Yeah, that's about it for this video. Do stick around for more. They're always in the works here on LGR. And as always, thank you for watching.